Hey, what's up? It's Zach, and today I'm creating an illustration in Photoshop in Illustrator. And so I'm starting off in Photoshop with a reference photo that I found on Pinterest. I'm going to leave a link to that in the description. So I'm starting off with the color lookup, just to give it a black and white look, and then I merge that into a layer. So that's why it says color lookup one. And so on that um, duplicated layer, I'm uh, using the selection tool and holding down shift to select a bunch of places. I created a smart object for that layer so that when I added the wave filter that I can edit it later and also create mass and stuff from it. And so I um, am using a, a uh, very soft brush, like the hardness is all the way down, to kind of paint away part of that mask so that it gives it like the look that it's kind of being um, pixelated away or kind of distorted away. So now I'm going into the halftone pattern uh, filter and I just created a layer of white and so I'm now adding lines to that. I added a um, hue saturation to turn it black and white just because I didn't know how to do it another way. And then combine that. Uh, yeah, I'm kind of playing with the composition right now because I wasn't exactly sure what I was going to do. Uh, I don't plan stuff out very well. So I was messing around with this, getting the Photoshop file set up. I already have a, as you can see, a color scheme that I kind of wanted to go with, the blue and like shades of white and the darker blue. I found that on Instagram. Uh, so yeah, I paste in my photo, my exported Photoshop JPEG. Um, the normal layers that I set up is I normally have a sketch on top that's like 50% opacity, whether that's coming from Photoshop or like pen and paper or whatever. And then a blacks color and background layer. Um, so right now you're seeing me create two lines, one on the top, one on the bottom of the image, and then uh, Control Alt B to blend them together. Um, I think it's like Command Option B on Mac, but I'm not sure. Um, so yeah, now I'm just gonna kind of trace over that sketch um, pretty loosely using the grid in the background that I have. Um, so that kind of makes it look like it's um, you know one with that grid and kind of is being distorted with the grid. Um, as far as the painting and kind of the um, dripping look to it. Honestly, that just comes from uh, studying and tracing a bunch of painting, like real painting uh, textures and using those in my drawings. Um, and then after a while, you just kind of get used to the motions and I can kind of just make them up as I go. So I'm not being super specific with any of this. I'm kind of just going over it loosely. And with most of the shading that's gonna happen, I pretty much just draw shapes on top of each other and pathfinder them together with like a 50% opacity and just kind of uh, work with the shapes and kind of morph them to get look like kind of the shading that I'm looking for. Um, I use merge a lot, divide, um, stuff like that. And I kind of just layer stuff on top of each other. I, I'll also, on a bunch of the dripping stuff, I'll end up going back and like making them thicker and stuff because I mess up a lot when I just draw it the first time. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna let some of this play out in time lapse and I'll be back to discuss the background.
getting ready to start in on the background, um, the main things I'm, I'm going to be doing here is using, um, like you can see those lines, I just created those with the blend tool also. And then I'm creating clipping mask, which is command 7 or control 7 if you're on Windows. And um, yeah, creating a shape on top of a shape or a group and uh, kind of masking a bunch of stuff out to create a bunch of different patterns. And yeah, so that's pretty much it. Nothing too complicated. Um, so I'm going to let the rest of this play in time lapse. I appreciate you checking out the video. And don't forget to like and subscribe.